there it is. Oh, there's the other Shelly. Oh, good. Yeah. And let's see. So it's being recorded. And let me, okay, where do I share it to? Um, oh, yes, live on Facebook. Hey, Shelly. <laughs> Are you like on the other side of the room from Sam? No. <laughs> Oh, She's are you like at home? The other side of the border from Sam. I was gonna say it looks very. Oh, are you San rough. Diego? Yeah, I'm. I'm in. I'm just south of Rosarito. Oh, oh nice, yeah, nice. So we uh, are at a very uh, empty Airbnb like condo place. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Oops, no, wait. Why isn't it? Oh, wait. No, that's not what I want. Um, I'm working on sharing it to Shoebox Projects. Okay, there we go. So, and it is being recorded, just so everybody knows. All right. And we are live on Shoebox Projects Facebook. So, um, yeah, I will get started and hopefully we'll get more people. I can let them in as we're talking and stuff. But um, welcome everybody. Um, thank you so much for being here. Um, this is our artist talk for Palmer Earl, um, the show called Tug of War, that um, it's an online solo exhibition through Shoebox Projects. T uh, Palmer is an artist with us through Shoebox PR, and we um, recently took Shoebox Projects online and, and started representing our artists through Shoebox PR. And so we've been um, doing online exhibitions, that way it gives artists another chance to get their work out there and to look at their work differently um, and also to be able to talk about their work like we're doing today. Um, we've had group shows. If you go on the website, shoeboxprojects.com, um, you'll be able to see our past exhibitions and then the current one um, with Palmer. And so um, with that, I want to introduce um, Sam S. Folly Osborne, who is part of the Shoebox team. And when we were working on the solo exhibition for Palmer, uh, we were going through her work and, on a, and actually, <laughs> I don't know how much we actually talked to Palmer about this, <laughs> but we were going through the work and Sam's like, wait, what about this work? And he came up with a brilliant curation. And so he is officially the curator of the exhibition. And um, with that, Sam, do you want to go ahead and talk about it? and? Um, yeah, go ahead and talk about it, and then when Palmer talks about her work, I'll go ahead and share the screen so we can see the work. But just kind of in general, you know, what, um, yeah, talk about, you know, how you curated the show. So one of the things that I've always really loved about Palmer's work is a lot of her pieces seem to live at that contact, contact point between our sort of interpersonal lives and the external cultural political forces that affect us. Uh, and mirrors show up a lot in Palmer's pieces, and I began to think about them uh, as a whole as sort of funhouse mirrors themselves, that they reflect back to us the way that this outside culture uh, recontextualizes the way that we think of ourselves. Uh, and so I wanted to grab a bunch of pieces that, that hit that particular point on the head. Uh, and I think I'd like to pass it off to Palmer there so we can look at some of the pieces individually. I missed a little bit of that, but I don't know what's going on with my internet, but I think, okay, I think I'm okay now. Oh no. <laughs> I just uh, missed the last tiny part, but. <laughs> Where okay. he was passing it off to you. <laughs> yeah, I, I heard something about, and something here's your pieces, but I, what, what was I, was there a question? <laughs> No, 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 I just figured we could look oh. at some of the pieces individually oh. yeah, as we talk about them. Okay. Um, I'll go ahead and share the screen. And Palmer, before we look, I mean, you know, as we look at the work, do you want to kind of tell us a little bit about your background as an artist first to start off with? Sure. Um, well, I've, I've always painted. Uh, I started taking art classes in first grade um, after school because I just loved painting so much. Um, that was the beginning. <laughs> and then uh, later I went to school visual arts for my BA, a BFA, and um, I never got my master's, but then uh, I moved to LA about 15 years ago. Um, 
and I've been painting full time for I I guess like eleven years, ten years. Yeah. There were some moments when I wasn't because I have kids, but when they were babies. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I live in Los Feliz. Awesome. <laughs> oh, cool. Um, well, let's go ahead and um, I guess, do you want to start with the first piece buried? Um, you know, talk about, um, yeah, I mean, tell us about the piece, how it came about, and all that fun stuff. Sure. Um, well, the, like I was talking about before, when I, I had twins, um, and I for a little while I wasn't working with them because we I didn't have any help for till they were six months old and then there was only a little bit. Um, so once they got a little older and I started having more painting time, I, I was, it was very overwhelming for me to, to, able, to be able to have a studio life and uh, a life with two babies and, it, and cleaning, you know, was impossible and everything else. And it just, this just completely reflects how I was feeling at that time, <laughs> buried. Um, these are just various items that seemed to pop up all over my house or just in my way all the time at that time. So I painted a woman, it's kind of hard to see her, but there is a woman under there. It's not a painting of me, but it's, you know, how I was feeling. So there is a woman under there and there's some newspaper collaged in there too, but, um, so yeah, I think you kind of get the hectic life that I was in at that moment. Yeah. It it's a great example of, um, yeah, of everything, you know, of motherhood, of womanhood, of, of everything you were dealing with, for sure. Yeah. Um, and then we get to, um, to holding on. Tell us about this piece. Um, this was, uh, often I have issues with depression and I, a big way that I deal with that is is by paintings. If, if especially if I've been feeling low for a while, it usually turns into some kind of imagery for me in my head. And um, and the the saying "losing her marbles," um, I was thinking about that a lot during one kind of spell of lowness. And um, so this is basically just me trying to keep it all together, um, and you know keep keep going with my life instead of just living in bed, <laughs> I guess. Um, so sometimes my painting is uh, really what helps me carry on. <laughs> Did you see the, um, you know, like when you looked at the exhibition that Sam curated, did you see where he, you know, where like, did you, before that, did you envision like this idea of mirroring and? No, not really. I guess I, I mean, I had definitely painted a few mirrors um, and, and a lot of, I mean, all of it is, is somewhat related, is related to me in some way. So they are, I mean, it makes sense. They're mirrors of a form or another of my own life. I think you, you, you do a really good job of getting your work being personal gets so specific that it hits hits that point of universality that I think a lot of us uh, are coming to terms with the fact that we go through periods of depression and especially these two pieces when I first came across them like immediately knew that feeling knew that place that those yeah. and it was like oh this is uh in a way of like yeah this this is not just me this is a uh, a lot of people. Yeah. Um, I'll be back in right in just a second. But go yeah. ahead and tell us about this next piece. Oh, okay. Losing her marbles. Uh, well, that's the same same basic theme. Um, it's just a little bit more. It's sort of like I don't know. It's sort of actually happening at that time. I I just when 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 I say losing your marbles, in my mind, it makes I I picture my head just full of marbles. And that they're like, you know, slowly falling out, or or in this case, really falling out fast. And um... I think there's something interesting here too that a lot of times when we think about how we process emotions, when we like recognize emotions in other people, 
we're thinking about the face and facial expressions. And in both of these two, you have consciously avoided the face and gotten to those emotions in a different way. Yeah, I don't paint faces very often because um, I like, for me, I like to be able to imagine that it's um, not only specifically me in these situations or feeling this way. And, and, and I just feel like it's easier for people to relate to it if there isn't a face, these faces are so personal. Um, also then you don't really, I feel a lot of times like when there's a face, that's the thing you look at like the most in a painting and it, that's not really what it's about. So I don't know, I don't do a lot of faces. Sometimes. Uh, I also, I really like the, the, the setting you have here is a very modern, clean cut, nice lines uh, bathroom. Yeah, well, I, I wanted it to be like um, similar to sort of a sanatorium or something like very, you know, stark and institutional feeling. Um, so does it make sense with the subject? Um, not that I've been institutionalized yet, <laughs> <laughs> but you never know. <laughs> um, yeah, and also just, a what? Go ahead, Palmer. I was just going to say also, it's just sort of a common, it could be anyone's bathroom, really, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I, I would flip on to the next image, but I don't have that control over here. Uh oh. <laughs> yes. I, I also had a question for you. These two, are these from the same period as Buried? Um, no, these were earlier. Um, these were pre-baby. <laughs> Um, yeah. I feel like there's also some, especially with the hands, some overlap there too, right? Of all of these marbles that you can't hold on to and they're yeah. out of your hands, right? And then the, uh, the getting buried under all of the sort of distritus of motherhood and domesticity. Yeah, the feeling of being out of control is definitely occurring a lot in my life. So it, it all goes into everything pretty much. Uh, yeah, and I think here too, there's a fun with the, the way that you're playing around with the idiom in here. Uh, we, we get the, the emotional resonance of the piece, but there's also a little bit of a sense of humor in here. Yeah. Definitely. If anybody has any other questions, please feel free to, you know, to jump in. This is just a, you know, great conversation with Palmer about her work. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see, and then the next piece, which I, I'm, you know, I don't mind admitting is one of my favorites. <laughs> oh, thanks. How did this that come was out? was a fun one to do. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm sure it's somewhat true for men, but mostly I think this is a female type of thing with the pressure uh, that every, all of us feel to um, be looking good all the time even I mean I don't know it's just at least for me like I've I was brought up to to be conscious of how I looked and um you know my parents were always admiring women that looked a certain way and um it was just it's just it's just a lot and sometimes I feel like um I don't want to worry about it because I, I feel like I if I just spend all my time preening and and looking like, you know, like I'm trying so hard every day to look good, then then I feel like I'm just, I might as well just be a peacock. Like it's just not, I wanna be more to, I, I don't wanna just spend, I don't wanna go overboard with my quest for beauty. Like like a lot of women fall into that trap. And sometimes I, I step back and I'm like, okay, just remember you don't wanna be a, like a peacock. <laughs> you're you're a woman and um, it's just about, it's just about that. and how um, women have to be careful not to just get sucked into that world. It's really hard to do, especially living in Los yeah. Angeles and the celebrity culture and just- And not getting years. old, we can't, and no one gets old anymore. And yeah. not only do you have to be smart and have a good career now too, mm -hmm. and be a mom, you also have to look good and be in excellent shape. Like, I mean, obviously you don't have to, but there are a lot of people that are claiming to be all of those things and then it makes you feel like you need to be those things. And it's, it's, a lot more to live up to than I think most women in the past have had to live up to because it's not just beauty also now. You have to 
also you're supposed to be super smart and a wonderful mom also. It's, it's, it's a lot. Yeah, that's where that tug of war comes in. <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Um, and another, This is know, just the same Brady's basic theme. Um, once, uh, once I actually had, had the babies, uh, it was, it was like it was before where I, you know, you still feel pressure to, to look a certain way and everything. But then once you have kids, it's, you just don't have time. You, you, your time is so limited and your energy is so limited, especially when they're babies and you're still supposed to be all of these other things. But when really it's, it's only the only one thing that you can truly be right then is a mom and like taking care of two babies is all consuming, but yet, you know, you're supposed to be the, the fun, sexy wife or your husband and you're supposed to be also getting back in shape after the babies and like still having a, a nice clean house. And then also when trying to get back to work and it's, you know, keeping up with the, the prop, my garden and all just so many things I'm supposed to be doing at the same time. And it's, it gets very overwhelming. Um, so these, so it's like, I have like a million different, different per people I'm supposed to be. And I think it's, uh, and I love how you're using like mannequin arms. I mean, yeah. they, you know, it's like that plasticity, you know, the idea of, you know, that ideal figure, that ideal woman that, you know, that's normally a mannequin. They only recently started making like normal size or plus size mannequins. Even. Barely. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. This yeah. one would be good right next to buried. Yeah. So like, yeah. We were done around, around the same time, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, and then this is a, you know, I love this series. Now this is, is this a different series or? It was just, this is, this was just about a, um, an issue of rage that I have. It's gotten better, but I don't know. There was a time when I, um, all that stress of having babies and all the things we were talking about, I, I also would just just this rage would come out at inopportune times, especially towards uh, my husband. And like, it was, it was just kind of out of control a little bit. That, um, so I felt like I had, that when I'm feeling certain things for a while, they, they turn into symbols in my brain and that's kind of how I deal with them. And then I usually end up doing a painting about it. Um, and so this one, it was like having it, like this fierce cat inside me that I couldn't help. It would just come out of me at, at certain times and I, and I was helpless, basically. Um, so it was living, it was part of me though, so. With all of your work. That's not my body, but. No. <laughs> <laughs> Do you use models or, um, or? Mostly from photographs, but um, there's certain websites that have like tons and tons of poses that you can look at, which I do a lot, but for, my, for the limbs, it's usually me, because uh, I don't mind painting my limbs. Yeah. <laughs> no torso. <laughs> um, it's, you know, in all of your work, there's like, you know, you are, you know, it's raw and it's real and it's, you know, and it's vulnerable. And I mean, of course, I think as artists, that's what we portray. That's what we put out there. But for you, even more so. And as you talk about it, even, you know, these are things that a lot of people hide and, you know, don't want people to know about. So, you know, it's, um, it's very brave of you, you know, to put all of that out there in your art and then out to the public. Yeah, well, it, it, it's been some practice. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I understand that. <laughs> and I, I think that honesty too contributes a bit of like catharsis to each of the paintings because uh, those bits that often, like Christine was saying, we're trying to hide are still universal. Yeah. And when they're, they're laid out here like this, we get to have that, that thing of like, oh, I've been keeping that to myself. And here it is just laid out on a painting. Maybe I don't have to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Very true. Mm -hmm. um, and then another one in that series. Yeah. That, I mean, it's just, it's so, um, you know, the work is physical, like you can feel her, you know, bending over and you can feel the animal on her back and, you know, like um, biting into her almost. I mean, it's, and you can feel the pain 
you know, in this piece and everything that she's going through. Um, and then, uh, and also, I think it was this part of the series also? Wasn't table scraps? necessarily a series, but yeah, they were, they were done around the same time. Um, but this is, this is um, just about, um, it's, it's sort of, uh, after, sometimes I, mostly my husband is the, is the main breadwinner <laughs> in our relationship. And I, and it, um, it makes me feel uncomfortable and I don't, I don't like being dependent on people, but you know, we have a, we have it sort of equally, like I do more stuff with the kids and, um, and more in charge of the house and things like that. So we try to share things but financially I don't like being dependent on him and I I sort of am I mean we've decided that that's the role I I mean as as of now I help a little bit but hopefully more <laughs> sometimes <laughs> but um anyway you, it just feels sort of like you're like there sometimes I can feel just I put it on myself and it makes me feel guilty that I'm not like this big career woman um making you know an equal salary and it makes me feel sometimes like I'm just Kind of living off of the scraps that that he throws me even though it's not really like that but but i feel like that sometimes there's too much pressure to be successful financially also and i can't do all of those so it's just hard sometimes definitely and there's so many i mean this i think is she eating lettuce or a salad yeah, it's a little noodle, it's like a little noodle dish that they they ordered <laughs> oh okay <laughs> <laughs> I was, you know, just the idea, I mean, if it, even that, you know, um, and she's very thin, you know, yes. so talking about weight and the woman's body and dieting, and I mean, there's so many layers to your work, you um, know. Also, because you were saying before that you don't often paint faces, you did decide to put a face in this one. Uh, yeah. Was there a particular reason there? Um, I just, uh... I guess it would make it more without a face. I feel like it would be too much like she was just like sort of pretending to be a dog under the table. But I, so, I sort of just wanted to make sure that it, it was a, like a definite woman. Um, I don't know, I can't really explain it more than that, I guess. Uh, I just wanted there to be no doubt that it was a human. <laughs> if the boobs did weren't enough, you know. <laughs> well, plus, I mean, having the food in her mouth, being yeah. able to see her eating, and yeah, definitely. And then tell us about this piece, Mom. Well, of this one started oh a cab ride I had from LAX. Um, you know, you get these sometimes. You get these uh, men from usually from other countries. This guy, I believe, was Iranian, and. Um, you just want to have a quiet cab ride, but then, but they have to, you know, give you their whole life story and their ideology and, and tell you how you should be living your life for some reason. I guess it, it's kind of boring to drive people around, I guess. But so, you know, he's asking me questions or am I a mom? Am I a wife? Yes. Yes. Um, and do you work? And I'm like, well, yes, but um, I'm home a lot with the kids and stuff. And, and then he, he has to tell me that that's, Oh, you're, that's so great that you let your husband shine, that you let your husband go to work. Like, that's perfect. That's what you should be doing, you know? And, and I'm like, well, it's not, it's not easy. I don't, I don't really take it easy. And he's like, yeah, but you have to pretend that you're happy. You have to always be smiling and be the sunshine of your, of your house. The wife has to always be happy, you know? Because if you're, if you're not happy, then your husband's not happy and then he'll do bad at work and you don't want to make his life um, miserable. And like, you know, and your kids won't be happy if you're not happy. You must always be the sunshine and, and just on and on and, and how I have to be a good wife and a good mother. And it was like, you know, 45 minutes of that. And I just was kind of like, this is crazy. And it's already like, I try already. It was kind of a, he touched a nerve because I don't, obviously I don't believe that that's my job is to make everybody else's life happy by pretending I'm happy. But um but it sort of touched a nerve at, at this time in my life as my kids were really young. And I, it, it was hard for me to try to be upbeat and happy all the time, not all the time, but more than I should have been. And so when he said all that, it just kind of made me feel like this is sort of a painting about any mom really, but it, 
you, you feed them with your body and you, you do everything just, just for your kids basically. And, um, and the son, you're everything for them. But then you kind of lose yourself in the, in the meantime. So you can't see her face because you, you kind of fade away when you have babies, like you're just only there for them. And, um, it's, it's just, uh, it's not always a, a, a great time. <laughs> Obviously I love them and it was a wonderful thing, but they're, it's very hard to, to take care of twins. Um, yeah. And be <laughs> it's, you know, it's, um, I love that. I mean, this is such a strong, powerful piece. And that it, you know, it started from this cab ride, you know, from all yeah. of these thoughts and emotions and, you know, feelings coming out, you know, from this conversation. And I love how, you know, as artists, you know, that's how we like, tell, we tell our story this way. And it was like, you know, yeah. you just knew I need to do a painting about it. You know, yeah, I just kept thinking about it and, and it just turns into imagery. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then you start to bring your kids, or I don't, you know, yeah. you start to bring children into your work. And, you it's know, my daughter. Not. Yeah. Um, I never realized that what, once I had a daughter, how much time I would be spending monitoring myself and, um, and monitoring, monitoring, monitoring um, how she sees me look at myself, at, at me. Um, so, because I want her to grow up with a positive body image and to feel very confident and um, all of those things. But I'm not always that way. But I know if she sees me treating myself like I'm not always thinking I look beautiful and perfect. And I, I mean, you have to be, you can't be totally unreal about it, but like, I don't want to see her seeing me looking at myself in the mirror and being like, oh, what's this? Or I wish I was more like this or that, or... Um, all of those things because I know from experience <laughs> that if you see that as a little girl, you can't help but critique yourself constantly also. And, um, or other women sometimes. And it's just like a very negative way to, to do things. And I don't, I don't want her to have that. I want her to think she is great um, all the time. <laughs> and uh, so I have to really be careful what, what I say to myself and what I look at, what I look like when I'm looking at the mirror and she's with me. Like, I have to be like, hey, looking good, you know? <laughs> Even though I want to be like, oh God, why did I have to have all that dessert or, you know, whatever. <laughs> Stupid thing I'm telling myself. Um, so it's just a lot of work uh, having a daughter that in that sense, because you're trying to, you know, instill positive things in her that you didn't have. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, women have to be role models for their daughters, for their sons, for other women. And so often they're not, you know, it's, we compare ourselves to each other. And, you know, I mean, there's so much that goes into being a woman in that way. Um, I think I had mentioned to you previously a, a book called, I think it's called Fat Woman Walking. And <laughs> by Brittany Gibbons, I think is her name. Okay. And she, yeah, it's a great book. Um, she wrote the book because um, one day she was, you know, looking in the mirror and just, you know, hating herself. And I think she was talking about herself and she noticed her daughter standing there, you know, looking at her. And she realized, you know, that she did not want to portray that to her daughter. And, it, you know, so she started writing about it and talking about it and changing her, you know, perspective and, you know, on how you know, how to raise your daughter, you yeah. know, to be better than that. And it's tricky. Yeah. I mean, I look back on growing up, you know, and thinking about my mom and my aunts and, you know, family members and Weight Watchers, and they didn't have to lose weight. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's, but um, I, that was projected on me, you yeah. know, it's a powerful also, statement. Other women, like, I, I, I always try to point out nice, beautiful things about other women to my daughter also, like, oh, I love doesn't she have nice hair? Doesn't she, I like, I really like the choice she made in that skirt or, you know, just anything stupid, but just so she gets in the habit of appreciating women and not, you know, picking them apart. <laughs> yeah, definitely. There's this poem, I'll have to send it to you later. Um, it's, it's by a Katie Mackay. It's a slam poem. And at the end, it talks about, you know, I am not going to tell my daughter that she's pretty. I'm going to tell her that she's pretty, you know, smart, pretty, 
you know, I mean, all of these things that didn't have to do with looks. And yeah. it, it's a powerful, I'll send it to you. It's a powerful poem. It's, it's hard because you also don't want to never say they're pretty because then they're going to think that they're, they might be like, oh, well, I know I'm not. Or like, if someone says that to them when they're older, they're going to be like all freaked out or not know how to, I don't know. It's hard. I don't know yeah. what the answer is. <laughs> There's a balance, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And then there's this one with your kids also. Yeah. Um, that's sort of the same idea, but just with my son also that um, just, I get, it makes me upset sometimes when, when they see things, I'm like, oh God, I wish I, I wish they didn't see this or that. And not that they've ever really watched an award show <laughs> ever, or I don't even really either, but I know that they have red carpet and all that. And um, they, the men get to just be normal men and um, normal human beings and stand there for their picture. And they're all basically wearing the same outfit and it doesn't matter. But the women, you know, spend hours getting dressed and made up and s squeezing into little spanks and dresses. And, and then they stand in these strange ways that are like super uncomfortable and um, look completely fake. And uh, it's obvious. To, to little, I mean, when they see something like that, what, what would they be thinking? That like men get to be normal human beings and women have to be something other than human. <laughs> I don't know what, but dolls, I guess. Um, so I just, um, I just wish, you know, they didn't have to see things like that. But. Uh -huh, for sure. <laughs> um, yeah, and then tell us about this work. Um, okay, first of all, it's just, it's, I, I kind of think this one turned out cool in, in a certain way, because this is not really the back of a canvas, it's painted. Um, oh, cool. Yeah, oh, wow. so that's the front. Um, I painted it to look like wood and, you know, the back. Um, so I, I just always look at that and be like, wow, that turned out <laughs> better than I expected. Um, just a, anyway, uh, this is also just whenever I'm feeling down. Uh, painting really brings me, like it says, my brush pulls me out of the dark. Um, when I'm feeling really, really down, I, um, when I paint, it just, it just helps me so much. Um, so it's just, um, it's sometimes it feels like it's, it's my light that I'm following out of the dark. And once I get painting again, things get much better usually. Um, so it's just, it's just about how painting is so beneficial in my life. Yeah. I mean, it, it is interesting. I mean, to think about it in, in regard to that mirror idea also. Yeah. It's like that. Like someone's looking through to me painting kind of. Yeah. And also like you're painting your reality, you know, you're painting the outer world, you know, just as much as that inner world. Yeah. Let's see, and then, oh yes, and then Tug of War. <laughs> yeah. So tell us about this series. Okay, this is, again, about me battling, the battle I constantly have between uh, my positive, uh, life-affirming side of my brain and the negative side that um, sometimes takes over. Uh, so I, I kind of just, when I'm really grappling with my problems, I, I, I said, I turned things into, into metaphors. Um, so I kind of, even though in reality, butterflies are, are um, many times just as pretty or even more than butterflies, um, they, they kind of represent the dark, darker side because they usually are out at night and all of that. So they, so it's kind of, I just imagined this epic battle going on in my brain with, with the, all the butterflies that are, represent the positive thinking. And the, and the moths that are the negative side. And they, so this is just one of the battles where they're playing tug of war. And there's, um, it's hard to see in this image, but there's, there's brain matter uh, underneath the brown area. There, there's little lines. So it looks like brain. Um, so they're just, it's just sort of like this crazy world in my brain. <laughs> it's a powerful image. Oh, thank you. you also have so many just beautiful technical details here and not not just in the wings and the insects, but the the shadow that you've created on the brain matter of the tug of war. Oh yeah, 
Thank you. Definitely. Really doing details. It's like, it's a very Zen thing where you just like lose track of time and I, I love it. And you know, it's interesting. I mean, you know, you kind of said it, the, you know, the moths, I mean, this, the tug of war between good and evil, but which is good and which is evil. You know, yeah. it's like that. Yeah. It's that whole thing. Definitely. Yeah. The beauty, and I love the other pieces in this series also. It's a great series. Oh, thanks. No wonder it's sold. <laughs> yeah, you see. sweet. Um, and then we have a couple more pieces left. So tell us about this piece. Okay, this, I guess this, this was the first painting in the, sort of the first painting of the body of work that I'm currently working on. Um, it all kind of started with the Me Too um, movement and uh, basically I just wanted to, it just made me angry um, and I wanted to get to the bottom of what, when this all started. Like when did women become put in this position where, where we have, I mean, I, I'm really glad that those people got in trouble for doing terrible things to women, but I did, something about the way that it's, it became sort of tattletale-y in a way to me that, I don't know, that, that women, I'm really glad, don't get me wrong, I'm glad these people got in trouble and that women spoke their mind and said what happened to them and everything, but I just wish that there was a world where like, that would never happen. Like, where if someone harassed you in the office, you would, you would just be like, you know, no, I stop doing that, knock it off, you know, and that would be the end of it. Or like, you could, you would be treated as equals where you could just easily defend yourself and not even defend yourself, but just be like, knock it off, asshole, you know, and that would be the end of it. And, or like, or you would like punch them or, I don't know, just, just that it has to be in this way where we're always so afraid and feeling like the victim and having to tell someone else to get them in trouble and all of that. Like, I just wondered when this, when it all became like that, like when was there a time where we would be on equal footing with men and we could just be like, dude, knock it off, you know? Um, so I started reading all these books and researching about ancient cultures because I'm, I'm just very interested in the way that ancient uh, cultures uh, affect how women are treated and viewed today. And um, this was about, it used to be a long, 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 like, let's see, I guess about 20,000 years ago, there were uh, people, there was evidence that people believed in the great bird, this great bird goddess was like one of the earliest deities. And um, I just, and then even for thousands of years after that, there were, there were predominantly um, female gods, at least in sort of the Mesopotamia area where most of the religions came out of. And um, this is just sort of an imagination, uh, uh, just uh, imagining what would happen if the bird goddess, um, it's an Egyptian goose, which was one of the important birds. So that's why I chose it. But she, she just came back and, and was, you know, basically she's gonna attack these hunters that are trying to shoot her. And they're men and it's pretty it's pretty obvious <laughs> what that's about <laughs> so. it's you know like what sam was saying earlier just you know you're blending and the, the attention to detail that you put in these works you know also is is really beautiful oh, thank you that was hard <laughs> that one the water <laughs> <laughs> how long does a painting like this normally take you that was that was a particularly hard one because the water I did like probably five times, different times over and over and it wasn't right, it wasn't right. So I, that one was probably like two months, maybe a little more. Um, yeah, and that's, that's working on it like five days a week. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Let's see, and then webbing. I think this is the last piece in the, or in the exhibition that we have here. Yeah, um, webbing is, is it, it's, uh, again, relates to the, just the issues with my brain and um, ability to live your life in a positive way. <laughs> uh, and just how sometimes you can just, I just feel like, um, like I'm stuck behind these webs of just stuff that's not really there, like depression about things that aren't even really a problem. It's just like all in my mental, just like webs in my brain that I can't seem to get out of. 
um, it's just a struggle sometimes. And that's basically what that one's about. You know, we've talked about it before. Um, the idea that, I mean, it's, you know, yes, you're behind the webs, but you're also painting that you're breaking through the webs. Yeah. You know, that you're putting a hole in, that you're trying to open it. And in a lot of your work, there's that idea of breaking through, you know, which is a really positive message. Yeah. Well, I guess in making it, it's probably cheering myself up in, in some way. So it ends up being a positive thing, just even the act of making it in the first place. So, Yeah, for sure. Does anybody have any questions about any of the work before I stop sharing the screen? I just want to make sure before. Uh... Palmer, I just want to say oh, that hi. the work Hi, the work is just beautiful. Oh, thank you. And, um, you know, all the intent behind it is very interesting, too. And um, if I could just throw a blanket of relaxation on you, I would do it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you're great. Okay, you're thank beautiful. You're you. talented. Everything's good. Oh, just thanks. relax. <laughs> you, too. <laughs> you know, have you guys heard about the Beautiful exhibit. Very, very interesting. The work looks <laughs> fantastic. Sorry. Things are a little easier now. A lot of these were, you know, from a very stressful time. And I, I think everything's a little bit better now, but, you know. Good, good. Some days. <laughs> yeah. Have you heard about those weighted anxiety blankets? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think those shirts they sell for dogs for thunder. Oh, yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> it's like, so weird. I, my kids I bought me one. Kids. My kids yeah, bought yeah. me one. I, I, I don't like it at all. You feel like you're suffocating, so take the thing away. Oh. <laughs> it, gives, it gives me anxiety. <laughs> That's getting weird. Well, um, and this is a great transition, Palmer, to talk about, you know, these are like kind of not, I mean, they're older works compared to what you're doing now, but you have a whole new series. and. We thought about showing those, but these are works that don't often get shown. And so, and they're really important and deep and powerful. And so we oh, wanted to put you. a spotlight on these, but yeah, tell us about, you know, the new series that you're working on. Um, well, like I was saying about the bird goddess one, um, I'm just, I've just been doing a lot of reading into either religious texts or philosophy, um, also just history, things that happened um, thousands of years before Jesus, you know, before BCE, I should say, um, before the year zero. <laughs> and um, there's just so many things that went on and were, were made back then um, that still, I believe, still heavily affect how we are treated today. And I just, I just, I just, um, I think it's important for people to know, not that when you see my paintings, you would necessarily know about all of these things, but at least for me, I think it's important to, to paint them because I think if we understand why we're in this mess that we're in now, um, how it happened to come about, if we can figure that out a little bit more, we can realize that it's not true. Women aren't we can all we all need to realize in our brains that women are equal to men on all footing and and um but it's hard when socially we've been even if we don't think we are we are um you know being sexist we probably all are at this stage because everything has been set up in that way since for thousands of years thousands and thousands and um i i just think it's important to tell the stories that have impacted where we are now and um just really interested in that and there's a lot of material so uh so i've been doing different paintings about um a lot of stories from the old testament i've been doing paintings about that um the iliad uh aristotle just all the social constructs that i think have made the biggest impact on us today um and i use collage a lot and that, that's eve back there <laughs> um they, i use collage a lot in my work of, of the actual texts that that were so important um, in shaping how we are right now. That's pretty much what I'm doing.
is the new series, is this the first time, I mean, like we didn't really see it in this series or in the work that we just showed, but is that the first time where you brought um, other material in, the collage material in? I guess I had forgotten until I just re saw Buried. A bit in Buried, I did add some newspaper. Oh, okay. Um, because at the time my father was still sending me the New York Times every day. And I was like, just overwhelmed by the amount of newspaper that would come to our door every day. And I mean, please stop. I cannot, I'm not in the place in my life where I have time to read any kind of papers. <laughs> and uh, so I had to add in some newspaper for that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, not, not since then. Um, yeah, so I, I just, I'm, I just finished this one about Jezebel. You can see it's all, uh, it's all oh, yeah. Old Testament pages. So I don't know. I just think it, um, it just, it just seems to, I just, it just stresses how important those ancient texts are. Not in a good way, <laughs> but to me anyway. Um, so that's why I've been doing it for some of them. Yeah, fantastic. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions for Palmer? Um, you can see the new series on her website, um, which she yeah. recently updated, palmerearl.com. So <laughs> definitely check it out and follow her on social media. Oh, yes, please. <laughs> um, well, thanks for doing this, guys. Um, yeah. Palmer, you, you, the work's fantastic. And, oh, and I have thanks. to say, one of the things I really love about it is, is the conceptual thinking you put into it and how you, it's so, so unexpected. And I have to say, there's one piece on your website that I was like, I was floored because I've never seen anything like it. It's unbelievable. Is that as a lure? The lure? Oh, yeah. So good. It's so good. It's such Thank a Thank you. It's and based I, on and Pandora. Think, let's say again? Based on the story of Pandora. Yeah, it's so good. So I, I really appreciate a lot of the deep conceptual thinking you put into your work. It's, oh, it's really magical. That's nice to hear. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of planning. <laughs> Yeah, but you do a lot of research. I mean, you showed us, you know, your sketchbooks and, you know, things that you're reading and, um, you know, and I love that, you know, to know that back history, you know, of all of the research that you do, you know, before you do a painting. Yeah. Well, I mean, usually no one else would know it but me, but I don't, but I want to like make it as accurate in my brain, like as I can, even though, it doesn't really make a difference, but I don't it know. It does, I'm definitely. Perfectionist in that way, I guess. You're an artist. Yeah. That's what you yeah. do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, any more questions? <laughs> Great. Well, with thank that, you. I mean, you know, thank you, Palmer. Um, I mean, it's a beautiful exhibition, and thank you, Sam. Yes, you know, thank for... Sam. It was a great, great um, idea. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, I love, you know, when he first sent us the, you know, the story or the idea, it was like, oh my God, that's brilliant. It's, yeah, I love great. looking at work, you know, and thinking about it in a different way like that. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, it's, when you look at it for so long, it's, you know, I mean, I love how you have it on your website under the different, you know, collections, but, you know, you can, you see this theme, it's you, you know, yeah. throughout all the work. And so when you see it like this, you know, it's, it's really great. So yes, thank you, Sam. And thank you, Palmer, for thank telling us guys. all about the work and tuning um, in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you, everybody for being here. Um, it's on our shoebox. I did it live on shoebox projects on Facebook. So if you want to rewatch it, if you missed some of it, um, and it'll be on our YouTube also on shoebox PR's YouTube. So um, yeah, awesome. Well, thank Thanks you so all. Much. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday or Halloween. Ooh, happy Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> yep, happy Halloween, everybody. Bye. Bye. <laughs>